lights out for the third race and a good reaction time for Schwartzman who's gonna power alongside but he can't risk anything. Poor chair maintains the lead. Prima one and uh, two and three I should say as they're all over the road. Messiest start that we've seen so far this weekend but it's poor chair Schwartzman and Piastri has left on the grid there. Jack Aitken has not got off the line to bring out the yellow flags. He will be pushed to the pit lane but it's absolutely everything that Teo Porcher needed. Didn't get the best reaction time but saw off Schwartzman into the braking zone. Fourth is Dan Tickton, fifth is Yuri Vips. He's made a good break and they should be able to move Aitken off the start finish line before the track, before the full field get back around to the start and it's all messy down into the hairpin for the first time then. Getting rid of the super soft and putting on the soft tyre is Felipe Dragovic in the second UNI Virtuosi. We heard Teo Porcher, part of the Sauber Academy. Sauber do have the Academy. Of course, the Alfa Romeo link in Formula One is uh, purely branding. Still the Sauber engineering sticker on the side of that car. Uh, off the road there, in the background, I didn't quite catch who that was pulling off at the Nouvelle Chiquette. That's the car in the Jan de Ruvula who's gone deep and his race appears to be over. Oh, into the back of Petakoff in the Carlin. And that just about caps things off for Jan de Ruvula's weekend. OK, Dan, there's a big gap on track that we're going to try and get you into. So we're going to box this lap, please. Box this lap. Here is Dan Tickton. They didn't like the undercut because of the warm-up problems, but you've got lower fuel at this stage. You've got softer tyres, and you've got Dan Tickton trying to find a way by. He is in a straight fight, the first of the top five to come in. It's a sharp pit stop for Piastri. It's going to be a difficult one for Tickton. Looks like he's been responded to here. Let's see if it was the right way to go. Piastri's on the pit exit, but he's going to be tiptoeing through the next couple of corners. So Tictum listed as behind for the time being. And Piastri comfortably claiming track position for the time being. Oh, it's a bad oh, stop problem. for Schwarzman. Oh, this is exactly what Schwarzman didn't need. It's going the same way as the rest of the season. This isn't just going to drop him out a second. It could drop him down to fifth position. And the driver who was trying to put pressure on for first is going to end up, or he's going to end up ahead of Yuri Vips, but sees the chance of the podium fade away. So he does. Difficult left rear. And we've got Armstrong into the wall, and that will surely be a safety car. That will be a safety car because the Kiwi has lost it and damaged the front of the car. Yellow flag is out in sector three. Now it's a virtual safety car. Uh, it looks like a bit of contact then, and it's just been run into the wall. A bit of contact on the exit of Ras Cass. And once he, look, once he uh, gets in touch with the wall there, he can't actually turn the steering wheel to get the car out of the wall, which is why the eventual contact happens. And the green flag's back out there. Yellow flag is out there again, as straight off the road goes the Rimzen Delhi. So we clear one virtual <laughs> safety car, and we might have another now. He's reversing. Don't want to reverse too far there. A straight lockup, cold tyre situation for Zen Delhi. Oh, goodness oh, me, a big lock, lock up. up for Piastri, who's managed to keep it within the white lines, but what can Tictum do? Tictum's going to send one round the outside of the Raskas. Piastri's not going to be passed there, and Tictum is shoved into the wall. And Dan Tictum is stranded. Dan Tictum plummeting down the order, just plain ran out of racetrack to use, but it's, it's going to be, it's always so difficult to get round the outside of Raskas. He had to try something. Piastri locks up, critically manages to keep it within the road because he knew he was going to be under pressure if he went wide. I'm really, really sorry. And how he's reacted to that after seeing the chance of third place, could have been second place, disappear. Dragovic will be delighted. This man's teammate that we're looking at in the bright blue UNI Virtuosi, he will be delighted with that run on the alternate strategy. He has run from ninth on the grid to fourth in the race and making up that many places around Monaco, that represents a good afternoon's work. And finally, making his way to the pits, Guan Yu Zhou, 
has had enough of those tyres and he will come into the pits to elevate Teo Porcher to the race lead ahead of Oscar Piastri and Felipe Dragovic will go from ninth place on the grid and on to the podium with five laps to go. Big pressure here. There is a DRS zone to use for Bosch up down the front straight. He's going to try the outside the into Sandoval. Of Sandoval. Stand back. Can he make it? Will he risk it? No. Try the up and under. Go on, you, Joe. I'm not sure he's looked out the front of his car for about half a lap now. Desperately trying to keep the Swiss driver behind. Joe just about hangs on. His father first brought him to this racetrack when he was three years old. He remembers watching Fernando Alonso and Michael Schumacher. And now, 14 years later, he's about to climb onto the top step of the podium. A moment of Formula 2 history. Teo Porcher becomes the youngest ever winner of an F2 race at just 17 years of age. And ART can celebrate. Okay, Teo, bravo. Bravo. Teo Porcher with a win that you could see meant so much as he came across the line, basically reaching out of the car, drinking in every single moment of being a Monaco Grand Prix winner. Guan Yu Zhou still in the lead, but Oscar Piastri up to P2. Teo Porcher now in third place. Three more races in the bag, six for the season. We go to Baku next. Join us then on those streets for another contest when the brilliant FIA Formula 2 returns.